Hey, welcome back to the channel. So I just recently bought an older iMac, and in this video, I'm gonna tell you why I bought a 2013 iMac in 2018. What I'm about to propose to you is both highly lucrative and highly dangerous. So if you're somebody that's been watching my channel for a while, you know that I'm into building Hackintosh computers, but honestly, I've just completely gotten burned out on that recently and wanted to get a real Mac so I could run Final Cut Pro in all its glory. Now doing some research and stuff, I decided quickly that I did not want to get a brand new Mac, mostly because of the price and it was overkill for what I wanted to do, so I decided to go with an older one. Now I'm gonna get into the reasons why I chose an older one but before I do, if it's something you're thinking about, there's really two ways to go about this. You can either buy it refurbished from Apple, so I'll put a link down in the description to the Apple refurb site. They have more recent uh, Macintoshes out there that they've been factory refurbished by Apple and you can purchase them from Apple. You can get all the warranty, you can get the Apple Care and all that stuff. They're slightly discounted, they're still pretty expensive and they're the newer model. So that's definitely one route to go. The other route and the route I chose to go is to buy it used from someplace like Craigslist or eBay or Swappa. Uh, I got mine on Craigslist, did a little bit of negotiation and ended up with this machine. So like I said, primarily what I wanna do is edit my YouTube videos, which I shoot in 4K on my Lumix G7 camera, and I wanted to be able to edit those in Final Cut Pro. And after doing some research, I found out that anything after like 2012, 2013, with a dedicated GPU, not the Intel uh, processor, can edit stuff just fine in Final Cut Pro. Now, because I was getting an older machine, I wanted to get what was top of the line at that point in time for the machine because I knew I'd need the horsepower to do the editing that I want. And that's what I got with this machine. It's a 2013 27 inch iMac. It's got a 1440p display, a fourth generation i7 processor, 32 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, a three terabyte fusion drive, and a four gigabyte 780M. Uh, after a little bit of haggling, I was able to get it for 650 bucks. Now, if you're looking to go the used route like I did, I would not recommend getting anything older than 2012. 2012 for pretty much the whole Mac lineup is when they switched over to USB 3.0 and a faster system bus as well. So the ports on this machine has pretty much everything I could want. It's got four USB 3.0 ports, two Thunderbolt ports, that's Thunderbolt 1, Ethernet port, SD card reader, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, it has Bluetooth 4.0 internally and 802.11 AC wireless, and it does support up to the five gigahertz AC. And like I said, for me, that's pretty much all the connectivity I could want, and this was a great setup for me. So design-wise, right about 2013 is when they went to that slimmer iMac design, and this one actually looks very, very similar to the iMac Pro. So it's got the very thin edges with a bit, little bit of a bump behind, but overall it's still incredibly thin, and the 1440p display is absolutely beautiful on this machine. So as you would expect, in day-to-day -day activities, this thing works fantastically well. Browsing the web and doing office work and you know, watching YouTube videos, things like that were great. In fact, you're not really gonna see that much difference between this machine and a brand new iMac that you might get. If you're doing just those day-to-day -day activities, it works just as well. Applications open super quick. Everything performs well. You can multitask to your heart's content with that 32 gigs of RAM. Everything just works great. All right, so I gotta talk about gaming just a little bit here. Now, Macs are not designed for gaming. If you're looking to buy a machine and your primary objective is to be gaming on it, then don't get a Mac. Go out and buy yourself a Windows machine, buy a gaming machine, build a gaming machine, go that route. But if you just wanna do some casual gaming and stuff, I was actually really, really surprised at how well games worked on this machine. I played uh, games like Fortnite and Seven Days to Die and you know a, a few other games that are available on Mac and they actually all worked really well. It has to do with that four gigs that's on that GTX 780M. Now you're not gonna be able to go out and play AAA titles at 1440p ultra settings and get 
over 100 frames per second, that's just not gonna happen. But a lot of games at 1080p on medium settings, you'll get anywhere from 30 to 60 frames per second, which is really playable, um, unless you're doing like competition games, it's not so playable. But if you wanna get even better performance, then there's the option of loading Windows 10 on the iMac through bootcamp and booting into that, and you get a much better performance in there. Uh, I'll put a link up here to a video I did of Fortnite running in Mac OS and Windows on this machine if you wanna check that out and get an idea of what the performance would be like. Now, like I said near the beginning of this video, one of the things I wanted the most out of this machine was editing in Final Cut Pro, and I could not be happier with this machine in that regard. On my Lumix G7, I shoot 4K video, MP4, H.264 encoded, which is a horrible format for editing. Uh, you usually have to transcode that video to get a smooth editing, but I can take that right off my camera, load it into this 2013 iMac, load it into Final Cut Pro or DaVinci Resolve for that matter, and have a beautiful editing experience. Plays back at full speed, the scrubbing is completely smooth. I can even add transitions and effects and color correction and color grading titles, all that good stuff, it doesn't slow down, stays smooth, and it's just a buttery smooth process from the beginning to the end. Exporting a video is also extremely fast on this machine. Sure, it would be a little bit faster on a newer machine with faster internals and faster drive, faster processor and GPU and all that stuff. You know, that export time is gonna be shorter, but on this machine, it is great. I'll put another video up here that I did of editing 4K of, on this machine so you can see more details of that performance. But for me, where I'm at with my channel, with how often I do videos, I'm completely fine with waiting just a little extra for that video to be exported over a brand new machine. It didn't make sense to me to spend the extra money for a brand new machine or even a newer machine uh, for that little bit of gain in speed on the back end. I'm completely happy with how this performs right now in Final Cut Pro, and that's really what I was looking for. Now you may have noticed I mentioned Final Cut Pro and DaVinci Resolve, but I didn't mention Premiere, and that's because Premiere does not work very well on this machine. Those same files, I can take them, put them into Premiere, and the scrubbing is not smooth at all. The playback is really choppy. I would have to create the optimized media. And you know, my goal was to get a machine that I could edit smoothly uh, in Final Cut Pro, which this machine does. So I honestly don't care how Premiere performs on this machine. So for me, I am so happy that I went this route and bought this used machine. I feel like it does everything that I needed to do for just a fraction of the cost of a brand new machine. I basically got a top of the line machine. Yeah, it's used, but it, for 650 bucks with the specs that are on this machine, with the way it performs, I think I got a steal of a deal. If you're gonna buy it used, just be patient, especially on Craigslist and eBay and Swappa. Be patient, look for the good deals, see if you can haggle with people and adjust that price a little bit. If you go with the refurbished machines on the Apple site, that's another good option too. You get the full warranty, you get a newer machine, and that is a great route to go. Um, and then, of course, there's always the route of buying it new. I'll leave that up to you. But thanks for stopping by and checking out the video. I hope you found this useful and informative. Please come see me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I love meeting new people on all those different forms of social media, and I will see you in the next video.